Watched last week's show. I took tons of phone calls from people. Spectacular show. We're getting great, res great response. If you haven't got the shows before, every week, it's a new week. All right, so I got a couple things here. You know, we share things on this show. And when I say we, I do mean me. That they really don't want you to know. We've talked about how controlling information as well as disinformation is the ultimate power. In the East, it was the KGB. Now they also have the Chinese secret police. In the West, it's primarily the CIA. Of course, in Britain, you have MI6 and the different spy agencies. But there's also spy agencies that you have never heard of, like the Brotherhood, because they're secret. There was a movie called The Good Shepherd. It's a terrible movie. Terrible, with Matt Damon, Angelina Jolie is in it. It's a terrible movie. It's a fictionalized account on the formation and starting of the CIA, Central Intelligence Agency, which originally was the OSS during the Second World War. Before that, we didn't have one per se. Then it became official in the Second World War as the OSS, only for international spying. Then it became the CIA, which changed from military spying, primarily in the Soviets, to a civilian organization, which was head up by members of Skull and Bones, the secret society. The CIA counterpart was the KGB. So those were the two big ones. And there was other secret police all around the world, or secret counterintelligence organizations. But it was primarily the KGB and primarily the CIA, and they actually controlled many of the other ones in different countries. Okay. So you had sp Spy versus Spy. There used to be a cartoon with that. Remember, you had the, the white spy, the good guy, and the black spy, you know, more black clothes, the bad guy. So the East versus the West, and the James Bond thus the James Bond outfit. James Bond was a spy for the good guys, the West, and he was spying against the bad guys, the East, those bad Russians, those Soviets, no good. East bad, communism bad, West good. Unless you lived over there, then it was communism good, capitalist pigs bad. It all depends on where you live and what propaganda you're being fed. Think about this. Think about this. It's what you're being fed. If you lived in the South, in America, back in the 50s, you would grow up believing in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you grew up in China in the 1950s, you would grow up with there is no God. None. If you grew up in India in the 1950s, you would grow up believing in the Hindu traditions. If you grew up in Saudi Arabia or Iran during the 1950s, you would grow up believing in the Quran and the Islamic traditions. And if you grew up and was born in 1955 in Dallas, Texas, you would grow up believing in the Dallas Cowboys. It's what we're programmed with. And of course, if you grew up in Wisconsin, you would hate the Dallas Cowboys. You would know that they are the enemy, that the Green Bay Packers are the savior of the National Football League. So think about this. It's the information that you're given, the control of that information flow is what controls the world. And the CIA, which was started by Skull and Bones, and in, in, in this movie, The Good Shepherd, 
they point out that controlling information and disinformation is the ultimate power. This is how you control the world. When I was with President Gorbachev, the last premier of the Soviet Union, prime minister, when we traveled together, we talked about how the CIA controls everything in America, covertly, in the same way that the KGB does in the Soviet Union. In that movie, The Good Shepherd, there was an interesting scene. It started the movie about the OSS during the Second World War and how Skull and Bones started it. Everything was secret, covert. They were given money, they could do whatever they want. Everything was kept secret. They were the military. And then when the CIA started, it was civilians with congressional oversight. So that the CIA was set up as a counterintelligence organization, which only was to operate outside of the United States. It was illegal for them to operate inside the United States. And to make sure that they weren't doing anything nefarious, they would have oversight by Congress. Senators and congressmen could go in and ask them questions. This is to make sure that the CIA weren't breaking any laws or killing people or setting up torture chambers or doing anything nefarious like overthrowing governments that the politicians didn't want, that they weren't running rogue and just saying, F you, we're going to do whatever we want. So to make sure that that didn't happen, they had government oversight. And in the movie, at the very last scene, or one of the last scenes, the CIA had just started with this government oversight and the main guy who was appointed the director just said, yeah, I'm going to a government oversight meet, uh, uh, hearing. And he laughs. And he goes, we do whatever we want. I tell them only what I want to tell them. And that's how it works. Think about this. I'm, I'm the director of the CIA. And you are the senators and the congressmen asking me questions. Mr. Trudeau, you are the director of the CIA. Yes, I am. You provided us the secret classified documents of your operations in Iran. Is that true? Yes, it's true. We, we did provide you all of the secret classified documents of all of our operations in Iran. Mr. Trudeau, does the CIA do anything else in Iran that you haven't revealed to us? No. Okay, thank you very much for coming. Have a nice day. That's how it goes. How does the senator know? I'm a secret organization. I got secret stuff going on. I'm not telling you. Uh, Mr. Trudeau, you're in charge of the CIA. Yes, I am. Is there a secret uh, military operation uh, in uh, what's called Groom Lake or Area 51? Uh, no, there's nothing there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, have a nice day. That went on for, for 30 years. The, the CIA said, no, there's no such, there's nothing at Groom Lake. They said to Congress, no, there's nothing there. We have no operation there. There's no, there's no underground anything. What are you talking about? And then Bill Clinton was on, up there when asked, is there anything going on in Area 51 at Groom Lake? No, I'm Bill Clinton, man. Look at me, I tell the truth, except when I was messing around with Jennifer Flowers, but everybody lies about women. Okay. Bill Clinton said, no, Groom Lake, say, Area 51, underground, like research? No, there's nothing there, ladies and gentlemen. I personally, Bill Clinton, President of the United States, can attest, and before me, the ex-CIA director, President Bush, ex-CIA director, remember that? He said that there's nothing going on there too. And he said it when he was the director of the CIA and president. Finally enough, whistleblowers came out and said Groom Lake, which is Area 51, is a hotbed of massive activity by the federal government. Federal government controls it. If you get close to it, there's black helicopters that come out. 
You are under surveillance, guns. You, it says you will be shot. Lethal force will be used if you step over into our area. Finally, Bill Clinton said, okay, I lied about Area 51. I didn't tell you the truth. Okay, we do have underground research and it's secret. And yeah, the CIA kind of runs it. And, and no, I'm, me as president, I'm not allowed to go there because the CIA won't let me. And I, I lied about it. And, um, but I was told that there's nothing alien. There's no alien spacecraft. There's no reversing of technology and everything that Bob Lazar said, who actually worked on all this stuff. Uh, none of it's true because the CIA told me none of it's true. Of course, I haven't been there. I haven't, I'm not allowed to go because the CIA won't let me in, even though I'm the president of the United States. Who controls this country? Who controls Russia? Putin. Used to be KGB. You have the head of the KGB in, in charge of, of Russia. So Putin does control Russia. The CIA controls America, and the CIA is controlled by skull and bones. And the Brotherhood. That's how it works. So the point being, information that you're getting, are you a SNIOP, someone who is susceptible to the negative influence of other people? Let's take it a step further. Are you susceptible to the influence of people? Do you just repeat what you read in the papers? Do you read the headlines and saying that, that that's just what it is? So for years, guys like me and others have saying, the air is polluted. Breathing the air is not good for your health. That's why in this studio, I got air filters right over here. And in my house, I have air filtration units. I use a rabbit air, IQ air, I use a Carico air filter, and I also have an Alpine air filter. I have multiple filters, they do multiple things. Sure, I invest a lot of money because I think my health is worth it. I invest money in my health because to me it's like, you either pay now or you pay later. You pay now by getting some air filters, water filters and different things for your health, or you pay later by getting a heart attack and saying you got cancer. Then you pay through the nose. So here we have a headline, which you've never, I'm gonna read you headlines that are news, actual factual data written by journalists, but it gets buried by the CIA. The CIA controls the flow of information through all the news media and social media platforms. And, and this is why, look, when I, this is stuff they don't want you to know about. This is stuff that for me to even reveal really puts me in a precarious situation. You know, when I used to do my show before, I always talked about the black uh, van that was outside. And there was a black van out there. And you could just walk up to him. I used to bang on the door and say, would you guys like some sandwiches? You know, they get the headphones on. I mean, they're, the, they're not the police. They're not even the CIA. They're the men in black CIA, the ones that don't exist, except they're right there. If you understand what I'm sharing with you, then you can step back from it and go, is that headline real? Every time you see a headline, a thumbnail on your social media, just know that all of them are lying to you. Just know you're being misled and deceived. Now, if you have that mindset, like, just imagine you go to a magic show and the magician said, I'm going to show you a magic trick. See, here's a quarter. It's gone. Just know he didn't dematerialize the quarter. 
know that it was a trick. He deceived you. He used misdirection. It's an illusion. The quarter did not vanish. It still exists. He hid it from view. Do you understand? Please. He's not sawing a woman in half, the magician, okay? It's a trick. The woman is really not sawed in half. If you thought she was, I have to break the news, she, she wasn't. When you see the magician she cut the woman in half. So when you look at the headlines, they are lies. No, that the CIA, Central Intelligence Agency, which is supposed to work only outside of the U.S., but that's the big lie. They work inside the U.S. Also know that they work completely independent of anybody else. They, they only reveal what they want to reveal to Congress. They have no oversight. And I know from personal experience. Okay, so here's a headline. It says, for communities near chemical plants, EPA's new air pollution rule spells relief. This article goes on to say that if you live near a chemical plant, the EPA is finally admitting that there are cancer-causing chemicals being put in the air knowingly by the chemical plant owners. But the Environmental Protection Agency now has a new rule that requires these people to reduce, not eliminate, reduce the amount of cancer-causing chemicals put into the air. But what they don't tell you this goes in the Kevin was right file. I've been talking about this for 25 years. In my book, Natural Cures They Don't Want You to Know About, I talked about it 25 years ago. But what they're not telling you is all the air, we'll call it almost all the air, is polluted with chemicals that not only are cancer causing, and these chemicals by the, uh, in the air, the pollutants in the air from the chemical plants, are not just cancer-causing. They make men feminine. They reduce testosterone levels. They make you gain weight. They make you fatigued. And, ready? They make you depressed. What is the solution? I have air filters in my house. That solution, um, numero uno. I have air filters in my house. Solution two, I try not to live in an area that's highly toxic, but that's impossible. You know, just the emissions coming out of cars are toxic, right? So get some air filters in your house. I mean, I don't know, do you care about your, your own health? Do you care about the health of your children? You know, I, I have air filters in my house and they run 24 seven. And sometimes if I'm cooking and I crank them up, sometimes before I go to bed, I'll crank it up in the bedroom. So a couple hours before I go to bed, it was on high. And then when I go to bed, I put it on silent low. So it's still going, but I don't hear it. It doesn't disturb my sleep. And I have a maid that comes in once a week that cleans my house. And that, that's, that's her business. She cleans houses. So she comes in and she dusts. And she says, Mr. Kevin, because she's not, English is not her first language, so she doesn't know, no matter how many times I tell her, that you don't say Mr. Kevin, it's Mr. Trudeau. Learn English, please. You live in an English-speaking country. But she's a lovely woman, even though I kid her all the time about her English. And I go, stop t talking to your kids in Spanish. She's got a little kid. Speak in English, make him an American. Like my parents did. My mother didn't speak to me in Italian. She spoke to me in English. She said, you're an American, not an Italian. You're not going to have an accent. Anyway. 
Think about it. But she says, Mr. Kevin, Mr. Trudeau, Mr. Kevin, you have no dust in your house. Why is that? I don't understand. I dust your house, there no dust, nowhere, no dust at any time. I says, well, are other houses dusty? All houses, lots of dust. Your house, no dust. Top of bookshelf, no dust. No dust anywhere. And I said, well, I have all these air filters going on. They, they filter out the dust. Now think about this, if you have dust in your house, that means it's coming from the air. And it's, if it's coming from the air and landing and giving you dust, you're breathing it. It makes you fat, gets you depressed, gives you cancer. No problem. Okay. In addition to the air, this goes into Kevin Wolf's right file. Biden administration imposes first ever national drinking water limits on toxic PFASs. So let's just look at that headline. The Biden administration, administration imposes first ever. So in other words, the federal government has never, reg, never said anything about the toxic PFASs in water. This is a to toxic chemical that's in water. It's called one of the forever chemicals, which now the government has admitted in the water supply, in addition to the poison fluoride, which wipes out your thyroid, makes you fat, and makes you depressed. You should have more of that. I want something that's gonna make me fat, stop my thyroid from producing thyroid hormone, which will make my metabolism low, which means if I look at a piece of cake, I gain weight. And I want something to make me depressed. Oh, let me, let me drink some more of that water. Mmm, that's good depressant filled water. Have some more fluoride. But in addition, there's all these chemicals. Oh, forget the chemicals from the plastics. Forget the microplastics, which is microscopic bits of plastic in the water. Forget when you test water throughout the country, something amazing shows up. Lipitor, there's high cholesterol reducing cholesterol drugs in the water. There's birth control pill substances in the water. So guys, you're taking estrogen, good, good for you. Yeah. Good, take, listen, it's okay that you have erectile dysfunction. You're 40 years old and can't get uh, an erection as hard as a rock. It's fine. That's normal. No, it's not. Look at a gorilla. They don't need Viagra when they're 90 years old in human years. They have no problem getting a firm, strong erection that lasts a long time and enjoying a full, healthy, robust sex life. But it's okay, the government will tell you it's okay for stupid fat Americans at 40 years old to need Viagra. That's why they advertise everywhere because nobody can get a hard on anymore even though they're with this hot, sexy girl. I don't understand this. Mind boggling, I'm an old guy. And I'm not gonna say much on this area. It is my private life. But I don't need it. No problems. Okay, so this says Biden administration imposes first ever, now listen, imposes first ever national drinking water limits on toxic PFASs. So let me, let me put that in English. The Biden administration admits that PFASs are highly toxic and detrimental to Americans' health. And the Biden administration says, we're going to allow a certain amount of these toxic PFASs in the water. We don't, we're not gonna eliminate them. We're going to allow, we're gonna tell the, the manufacturers of food and petroleum products and textiles and all these things, it's okay to put 
toxic, cancer-producing chemicals in the water that make people fat, get them depressed, so you can sell them more drugs. It's totally okay. But we are going to tell them you've been putting in too much. So you got to lower it a little. This goes to the Gavin Was Right file. This is the globalist agenda. I told you specifically that the government is putting stuff in the water and in the air to meet their agenda issues. The drug companies love it because the sicker you are, the more drugs you buy because you're stupid. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. I, I lost control. Cancel, cancel. The drug companies love it because they're brainwashing you into believing that the answer is another pharmaceutical drug. You're not stupid. You really not are not. And I say that not in a mean way when I use the word stupid. I say it out of love. Look, I remember my mother used to yell at me when I did something stupid. And when I was a kid, not now, but when I was a kid, not in a long time, but when I was a kid, very young, very young, I did a lot of stupid things. Like I ate dirt. I remember eating styrofoam cup. Okay, I did a lot of dumb things. I was the dumb kid. And my mother used to yell at me when I did something dumb. Something that I could hurt myself, I could kill myself, I could knock my teeth out. When I did something dumb, she would reprimand me in a very aggressive way. And, and one time I just said, you like, you just like being me. I was crying, of course, because she reprimanded me because I did something dumb. And I didn't deny that I, what I did was dumb, but I just didn't like the way she reprimanded me so hard. But she was trying to make an impression. And I said, you just like being mean. And she said, no, son, it'd be a lot easier if I didn't care. And I'll tell you what, a light bulb went off in my head because I had a friend of mine whose mother wasn't mean to him. And this kid cried because he said, my mother doesn't care about me. Quite frankly, maybe she didn't that much. She cared more about her own life. My mother cared, and I care about you, but not that much. I mean, I'm living my life. I do this. I could care less if you do it or not. But since we're here together, I might, and you came on your own volition, nobody put a gun to your head, I'm going to share with you. So the point is the government is putting stuff in the air. They're putting stuff in the water on purpose. The evidence is clear. It causes cancer. It increases weight, mess up your thyroid, mess up your hormone levels, gives you a whole host of diseases, cancer, of course, but also makes you depressed. That goes into Kevin Wood's right file. Now, along with this, where is my next article here that I have this here? Okay. The government also says that cancer rates are rising in young people due to accelerated aging, according to highly troubling new study. I'm sorry, uh, this goes in the Kevin Was Right file. 25 years ago I said this. I said, look, and it goes on to say, if you were born after 1967, you're screwed. Because after 1967, something magical happened in the United States. Processed food started taking over and drug use started skyrocketing. If you look, in the late 60s, all of a sudden you had frozen dinners, Swanson frozen dinners, everything was a frozen dinner, McDonald's was going crazy. All the processed food, processed food, processed food, processed food. Last few weeks I talked about how the evidence is clear that processed food causes all these illnesses and diseases. It's in my book, Natural Cures, they don't want you to know about. This is absolutely true. You are absolutely causing your own health problems. I just went into the doctor the other day. I'm an old guy, he drew three, four, quarts of blood, maybe, okay, not that much. But I asked him, I want every test on the planet. He did every test from head to toe. I did a circulatory test. He goes, 
perfect. That's unbelievable. I said, I want a, a, a heart a, a CAT scan with contrast. He goes, you got nothing. It's like de minimis plaque buildup. He goes, that's a, a, unheard of. It's like a 20 year old. I said, I want a, a, a lung uh, x-ray with uh, contrast. He goes, completely clear. You're clearly not a smoker. I go, well, I smoke cigars. I said, I want an MRI done on my head. Why? I go, I want to make sure I don't have a tumor. Well, do you have any symptoms? I go, look, by the time I have a symptom, it's too late. I go, check now. Because no, you're completely clean. Everything is like perfect. I did all this blood work and he looks, he goes, I, I have to tell you something. The, the doctor says, look, we're doing all these tests because you want all these tests done. He said, this blood work, he goes, you realize that I, I, I never run this many tests on anybody. He said, but every single test is not only within the, the range, the acceptable range. He says, 99% of your blood work is in the optimal range. Not just the acceptable range, but the optimal range. He goes, this is unbelievable. He goes, you can't find a 20 year old with blood work like this. I go, thank you very much. Now let me talk about my new book, Natural Cures, they don't want you to know about. Do I have it here? Yes, I do. So I, uh, I actually brought it with me. I said, I said, hey, that's me. And he goes, boy, that, you were a young, handsome guy. What do you mean, were a young, handsome guy? He goes, I didn't mean that bad. I go, see? I go, that's me. I go, that book sold 50 million copies, I think. It was number one in the New York Times bestseller list 26 weeks in a row. Best-selling health book of all time. And it reveals stuff you can't find in any other health book. I said, I use everything in here. I'm making this stuff up. So I actually do this stuff. Yeah, we'll put that there. That way you can see it for the entire show. How's that? Self-promotion right there. It's designed to help you. I know it. What do I care? I don't even get the money if you buy it. The money that comes to me and I have to give it to the government. So I don't, I don't get to do it. But it says here, cancer rates are rising among young people due to accelerated aging. And here's what it's talking about. It's basically saying that a person's biological age and genetic age are two different things. There's like six biomarkers that they'll look at, including telomeres or telomeres, depending on how you pronounce it the length of those, and there's a bunch of other markers. And this will determine your, your genetic age, your biological age. Like your body is 35. And the person says, but I'm 22. I'm, I mean, I was born 22 years ago. Well, you're screwed because your body is 35. That means you're going to die young and you're going to get cancer or heart disease or diabetes earlier. And isn't that happening, not just in the United States, but all over the world? Yeah, it's happening everywhere. People are getting illnesses and disease faster and sooner than ever before. Why? Why are, if we look at America, the, the amount of drugs being consumed goes up and up and up and up every year. We consume more drugs per person than any other country in the world. As a matter of fact, we consume, the United States, more drugs than the entire rest of the world combined. We're one of the sickest nations in the world. We have the highest rates of cancer, highest rates of heart disease, higher rates of heart attack, higher rates of diabetes, highest rates of every disease. We're like number one or in the top five. We take more drugs than anybody else. How is that? The drugs aren't curing the disease. You know, a past member of the FDA, guy who was a commissioner of the Food and Drug Administration, said drugs kill more people. Pharmaceutical prescribed drugs kill more people than the diseases they're being used to treat. So for example, if you take a Tylenol to treat pain, pain doesn't kill anybody, but Tylenol kills 2,000 people a year. So the drugs, whether it's an over-the-counter prescription drug or a pharmaceutical drug, they're killing more people every year than the diseases they're being used to treat because many of the diseases that these drugs are being used to treat are not life-threatening diseases. If you have psoriasis and you're taking a drug, the psoriasis is not gonna kill you. You're not gonna die from psoriasis. But a percentage of people, could be hundreds or thousands every year, will die from taking that drug to treat psoriasis and on and on and on. 
The pharmaceutical drugs are causing the problem. Just look at every single ad on television and look at all of the side effects. It's mind boggling, the side effects. But this article and research, this is the new study. It isn't a new study. There's studies like this been going on for decades. It's finally being reported. The fact of the matter is that people today, because of what's in the food supply, what's in the water and what's in the air, those three things primarily, and the amount of pharmaceutical drugs you're taking, prescription and non-prescription. You're loading your body up with toxins and chemicals. It's in the book, Natural Cures, this one right there. I described the whole thing. You can be healthy. You can be vigorous and vibrant. You don't need Viagra. You can have beautiful skin. You can be, you can sleep. Listen, I'm an old guy. I sleep all night long and never have to wake up to use the toilet. I don't need to go to the bathroom and pee. That's unheard of. My prostate's perfect. Why? Not because I'm like genetically engineered to be a super human. What you eat, what you drink, what you breathe, how you rest. Dr. Morta came up with the six essentials for health. These are the key elements. So this study shows again that people are doing it to themselves. And it goes on to talk about how processed food, consumption of pharmaceutical prescription and non-prescription drugs, as well as recreational drugs, the poor air we're breathing, the water we're drinking, because we don't have water filters. And this is causing the problem. The chemicals in the food, the chemicals in the water, the chemicals in the air, the pharmaceutical prescription and non-prescription drugs and recreational drugs. In fact, probably not sleeping well because of all those things that's affecting your aging. Your human growth hormone is going in being depleted. Your testosterone, if you're a man, is being depleted. But you can reverse it. It talks about air filters. That's a simple thing to do. Water filters. In my house, I have a whole house filtration system. Mine's from Fred Van Loo. I think he's the water expert at ewater.com. I don't get anything if you buy it from him. But I've known Fred since 1979. And there are other good filters out there, believe me. Fred will tell you that nobody else has anything any good, and this is the best, and nobody comes close. All right, Fred. I think there's a lot of good filters out there. I got Fred. He's a friend of mine. I trust him. Maybe there's a better filter. I don't know. But I have a whole house filtration. So the water comes in and goes through a post-filter, uh, I mean a pre-filter. Then it goes through granular activated charcoal, which I think is silver impregnated. Then after it goes through that, which takes out a whole bunch of chemicals and contaminants and blah, 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 goes through another post filter to clean out any, any maybe uh, charcoal dust. Then it goes through another device and then an uh, ultraviolet light, which kills any virus or bacteria. Then it goes into the house. And in my shower, I have one of his shower filters on top of it. So it goes through another set of KDF and this other type of media that the water passes through and gets rid of stuff. For my drinking water, I don't want fluoride. I don't want chemicals and contaminants. I drink Icelandic water and Wata. There's also another water here that I'm drinking today. It's that water from Hawaii. There's a lot of good waters out there. So I drink spring water. I think it's better. Look, this, I'm going to do a whole show on water. But the point is, I don't drink soda. I drink some beer. It's from Germany because it has three ingredients. I don't want American beer with high fructose corn syrup in it and made with rice. First off, that's not beer. Alcohol from rice is called sake, which is delicious if made from Japan with proper rice. The point is, Kevin was right. I said this years ago. I said, people are going to start being born and they're going to have a lifespan shorter than their parents. And it has happened. It has happened. My prediction was correct. 100% Kevin was right file. All right. A couple things here. Uh, first, before I go into a couple other things, I have to give you, because I love doing this, my book recommendation of the week and my movie reviews. So we will get rid of this one and let's go with the movie critic. I'll do the movie critic first. I am now Kevin Trudeau. There you go. Kevin Trudeau, movie critic. All right, so Kevin Trudeau, movie critic. If you haven't seen my movie critic or my movie review list, 
It's someplace. I don't know where it is. I think it's at KevinTrudeauFanClub.com. So if you haven't gone to KevinTrudeauFanClub.com, you should go there. You should become a partner, first off. Um, but check out the movie list. And also my book, recommended book list, is there as well. KevinTrudeauFanClub.com. You can get information on uh, my movie recommendations. I think it's there. And the book recommendations and also information on becoming a partner. All right. So my, my two movie recommendations. And by the way, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Hit that subscribe button. Share this video with everybody you know and leave a comment. We're going to get those numbers up. We want to get a million subscribers here as soon as possible. All right. First movie recommendation is a classic movie, which means it's in black and white. And it is old. It's a famous movie. Some of you have heard the phrase, and I will ask my three young gentlemen here who are very young if they've heard this phrase, and I'm, I'm going to bet the answer is going to be no, no, and no. I bet you I get three no's here. So the question is, have you ever heard the phrase, play it again, Sam? Okay, no, no, and no. It's a famous phrase that almost everybody in the world knows, except these for young men here. It's called Play It Again, Sam. Matter of fact, there's a, there's a secondhand uh, sporting goods store right around here called Play It Again, Sam's, because it comes from this movie. It's like a famous line. The movie has a beautiful Lauren Bacall, who I think is fantastic in the movie, and Humphrey Bogart in one of his coolest roles. A famous movie with no sex, no violence, no nudity, and no cursing. It's in black and white. It's called Casablanca. And I'm not gonna tell you the story of Casablanca. Casablanca is a city in North Africa. I believe it's in Morocco. And it's based also on a true story, loosely. During the Second World War. And the reason why I recommend this movie is, number one, it is a lovely movie. It's a great movie to watch with anyone. Mom and Dad, it's a great movie to watch with your lover, it's your friends. It's just a great movie to watch. It has beautiful acting. It has this, this lovely ups and downs of emotion. You're pulling for this person. You're pulling for that person. It has, you know, the good guy, the bad guy, and the good guy is kind of a bad guy or was a bad guy. And it's just a fascinating character portrayal of various people in the movie. And you have different emotions towards different people in the movie. But it comes from a different era of class, and integrity. It just comes from a different era. And it doesn't mean that everybody has integrity, because you have characters who have none, and you have characters that have a lot. You have characters who, depending on the situation, it is a wonderful example of various character traits based on situation. And it's a lovely movie. It's always rated as one of the top, probably 50 movies of all time, maybe even the top 10. So Casablanca, highly recommended. And if you do watch it, please come back and leave a comment and tell people that you liked it or what you liked about it. People always like to hear that. The next one will go in line with last week's movie. It is also starring Leslie Nielsen. It is a classic comedy, I believe done also by the Zucker Brothers, same people did last week's recommendation, which was Airplane. This week's recommendation is The Naked Gun. Now, for those of you who don't know, there was a TV series, which was a very smart, intellectual comedy TV series with Leslie Nielsen called Police Squad. And the comedy was kind of above everybody's pay grade or intelligence. So it didn't really resonate. 
So they came up with a movie years later called The Naked Gun, Stories of Police Squad. So it's kind of an offshoot of the TV series. It really is a funny movie. It is, I think, hilarious. And the reason why I recommend it is it's good, clean humor. There's no nudity. There's no cursing or swearing. There's no violence. It's some slapstick comedy, which I think you might find very funny. Some one-liner comedy that you have to listen to and catch the line with a lot of uh, straight men uh, or straight women, you know, not trying to be funny, but a funny situation. I think it's an amusing movie. It could be a movie, you, again, you watch with anybody, your lover, your family, your mom and dad, friends, brothers, sisters. It, I think it's good entertainment. Now, it is not for the kids. Casablanca, anybody can watch it. Naked Gun, I think, because of some of the sexual jokes, although they're not dirty sexual jokes or uh, locker room sexual jokes, but because there are maybe a couple sexual references there, eh, probably not, for, not best for the kids. But check that movie out. I think you will really enjoy it. I think it could be something that you uh, re really find interesting. Also, my book recommendation. Hey, Joe, can you grab this book over here? It's on the ground. See you at the top. Let me tell you about the book while Joe's getting it. This is a book. It's one of the foundational books. Thank you. It's one of the foundational books, I believe, of success. Our team, when they come on board, we give them a book to read every single month. Some read them faster than others, but they're required to read these books on success. And this is one of them. This book was originally published, I believe, in 1974 under the name Biscuits, Fleas, and Pump Handles by a guy that I used to travel with doing uh, motivational speaking, Zig Ziglar. I think one of the best motivational speakers of all time. Ed Foreman, Zig Ziglar, Les Brown, Nito Cobain. There's, there's a bunch of them that I think are spectacular motivational speakers. Zig, certainly in the top 10. This is the book. See you at the top. And this is, that's Zig Ziglar. Him and I traveled together and we uh, shared the platform together. This book says the how-to book that gives you a checkup from the neck up to eliminate stinking thinking and avoid hardening of the attitudes. Think about that. The chapters in this book, your stairway to the top, it gives you the steps that you need to take if you want to achieve ultimate success. Then there's segment two, all on self-image. Segment three is your relationship with others. So it's how to do and deal with other people. Four is how to set and achieve goals. Five is your attitude. Segment six is work. Something we don't even realize today, the importance of work. Workers are winners. And then segment seven is on desire. It's this really, really great book. It seems a little bit long and the print isn't that big, so it might take you a little while to read it, but I do encourage and recommend. I remember when I traveled with Zig, he used to always say, you know, Kevin, for every letter I get from somebody who says something such as, Zig, I saw you speak. I went to a seminar for six hours where you were teaching training on success and it changed my life. That seminar made all the difference in my life. I took the information I learned from that motivational speech and changed my life for the better, turned everything around, and now I'm happy, healthy, and successful. He says, for every letter I get like that, that talks about how someone benefited from one of my talks, he goes, I get 50 letters from someone who says, Zig, I read your book and it changed my life. Why? Because when you go to a speech, even when you're listening to me, you might feel good, and hopefully you're gonna feel good at the end in a few minutes. 
But it, if you, you feel good when you take a warm bath and then it goes away. When you read a book, it's not for an hour, an hour and a half, or 15 minutes. But when you're reading that book a little bit every day, a little bit every day, a little bit every day, you're feeding your mind consistently and persistently. Plus, you can underline something. You can go back and read it again. The, the fact that you will change more from reading a book than listening to an audio or going to a seminar is like night and day. So strongly encourage read some of the books on my recommended list. Now, there's one caveat here. Zig Ziglar was a very committed born-again Christian. He taught Sunday school every Sunday. So he is a 100% Bible-believing Baptist from Dallas, Texas. Jesus is the only way to heaven, and you are going to hell. Burn for the rest of eternity unless you give your life to Jesus. And I don't do that in a condescending way. I do that kind of in a comical way because him and I would joke about this. But he was a Bible-believing Christian, a little bit on the uh, uh, judgmental side if you didn't believe in him uh, and so forth. But the point is when you read the book, know the wonderful man is coming from a Christian perspective. So you might think to yourself, oh, so for some of you that could be a turnoff. But if you look at it without judgment or criticism and understand where he's coming from and the fact that it's coming from love, then you'll understand. But it is a wonderful, wonderful book. So highly endorse and, and, and recommend that. All right. So I got a couple other things here uh, before we go, and I'm going to give you some training. So buckle up and get ready for this spectacular training. Number one, driving. For everybody who drives a car, most of you don't know how to drive a car. I am a car driving expert, not just because I have gone through the most advanced high speed chase evasion driving technique schools on the planet at covert secret location, locations done by covert secret agencies. But the fact that I have a brain, that's why I'm a good driver. So let me just tell you a couple things about driving, ladies and gentlemen, please. It's going to make it safer for you and whoever's driving in your car and make it safer for everybody else. Rule number one. Okay. So rule number one, when you're driving, any time and every time you change lanes, or make a turn, put your directional on plenty of time in advance. 90% of people change lanes without using that, their directional. Half the people take a right or a left and don't use the directional. Where I grew up, we called it a blinker. That's dumb. A directional, I think, is better. But I grew up, we called it a blinker. It's the little device that if you move it up and down, it'll go click, 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 and it'll It'll flash so the guy behind you or the guy in front of you knows you're getting ready to change lanes or you're getting ready to take a right or a left. God, use your directionals. When I'm driving, I just know no one's going to use their directional and they'll shift lanes without informing me and I'm right behind them. So if I... So rule number one is use your directional. Rule number two, if you're driving, know that nobody is going to use their directional. So you have to figure, if you're on the right and a car is here, that this idiot is going to shift lanes and not tell you by using their directional. Prepare. You will be a better driver. Just know the guy's a moron. Guy is not going to put on his directional, and he'll probably just do this and then see me at the last minute and go, oh, because he's an idiot. Okay, so number one, use your directional always. I'm driving home, there's not a car behind me. And I turn right, guess what I do? I put on my directional. 
Kevin, who are you putting on the directional for? There's nobody in front of you and there's nobody behind you. There's nobody coming this way. Why are you using your directional? Because it is a habit. I always use my directional if I'm shifting lanes, regardless of who's behind me, who's to the left, who's to the right, or who's in front. If I'm changing lanes and there's nobody for 50 miles, I am using my damn directional because it is the habit you have to get into. You use it all the time. Use a directional. Rule number two when driving, the left lane. And it doesn't matter if there's two lanes or if you're on a freeway and there's three, four, or five lanes. The left lane is for passing only. If you're in the left lane and there's nobody in front of you and there's nobody to the right of you and you're and somebody comes behind you and you look and go, I'm going the speed limit. You're an idiot. Okay? So come here. Come here. Stop it. Get out of the left lane. Left lane is for passing. For those of you who are in Germany, God bless you. When I was in Germany, I was on the Autobahn. And I'm in the left lane. And I'm going 120 kilometers an, an hour or whatever, and maybe that's 400 miles an hour. I don't know what it was, but it was fast. And this Porsche is coming up, because I'm looking in my rear view. Porsche starts coming up, and he flashes his lights. He's not being rude. He's nicely telling me, excuse me, sir, May I please pass? And I move over into the right lane and I realize I shouldn't have even been in the left lane because I wasn't passing somebody. It's for overtaking. And he cruised along. And so rather than me pull into the left lane, I said, no, I'm not passing anyone. I'm going fast enough. And I stayed in that second lane. And then I watched cars zoom by. So if you're in the left lane, it is for overtaking and passing. So if you're in the left lane and you pass somebody, then move like that. That's it. You don't stay in this lane. Never stay in this lane unless you're overtaking somebody. Now, with the rare exception is, well, Kevin, my, my exit's coming up over that way, so I have to be in this lane. That's fine. Use your directional. Make sure you use your directional. Next and lastly of Driver Training 101. The rear view mirror is not an ornament. It's not for decoration. Neither are the side mirrors. They are to be used. When you're driving, one of the things that we did when I was in my advanced covert secret driving training was as you're driving, the instructor is sitting next to you and you have to give him a running commentary. There's a blue Ford sedan behind me. There's a silver van to my left coming up. You'll be overtaking. To my right, there's nothing coming toward me. You would be giving a running commentary of what's to the left of you, what's to the right of you, and what's behind you. And you'd be giving a running commentary of what you see in front of you. Is there a stop sign coming up? Is there a set of lights coming up? Is there a curve coming up? I would do this for freaking hours. Why? The training was be aware. Some people call it driving training. My uncle later told me, what type of training did you go through? And I said, well, I thought I was going to driver training. And then I realized I was going to conscious awareness training, being aware of my surroundings and being in present time. Because I can't be thinking about yesterday, who I'm gonna call, what I'm gonna have for dinner or tomorrow, while I'm giving this running commentary to this guy. Does that make sense? I have to be spot on, right on the money. You don't have to be that fanatical. But the driving tip is when you're driving, 
Look in your rear view mirror, kind of always know what's to the left, what's coming up, always know what's coming up to the right, and always know who's behind you and how fast they're going. That allows you to get more data and drive better. And then look in front of you. Most people look about 10 feet in front of the car looking at the road. A professional driver will look here. They'll be looking down the road and then go here and then here. Mostly and then here and then here. So their, their eye, if you watch the eye of a professional driver when he's driving, he's not looking at the end of his hood. He's only looking at the end of his hood and 10 feet in front when he's making a curb or something, if he has to be real precise on where the wheels are. But otherwise, he's looking 200 yards down the road. So he has a greater perspective and allows the brain to react faster. Look, I'm giving you stuff, man. You should be charged. I should. You should be sending me thousands of dollars for this life-changing information on how to drive, but not just how to drive. If you notice what I'm giving you, I'm giving you training on increasing your consciousness and awareness, as well as your safety. And I can guarantee, if you do this, there's something else that magically happens. When you get out of the car, your stress levels actually go down dramatically. Research studies have proven that just driving automobiles now. In Mexico City, it's way worse, or if you're in Rome. But just driving, and I'm sure I haven't been to Mumbai, but I, I probably that's probably number one. I don't know. Although when I grew up in Boston, we called it combat driving. You don't drive the car there; you aim the car. I used to love when, when remember when the, we had big cars back in the day, the big LTDs and things. Uh, Caprice Classic, we had a big car, and, that, and, and I remember when uh, 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 Cruise Control first came out. Do you guys remember when cr Cruise Control, you know, well, cr when Cruise Control first came out, and you know Cruise Control, that's the button you push that sets your speed at a constant. So I remember when it first came out, so I got a big car, and I used to love to use Cruise Control in extremely heavy traffic. Set that baby at like 65 miles an hour, see how fast I could weave in and out of cars without having to hit the brake. <laughs> but anyway, in certain cities, stress levels are off the charts. But every time you drive a car, when you get out, the stress levels have gone up. Cortisol levels have gone up. Stress levels go up just by driving. If you do what I suggest and recommend, you are going to feel more in control of driving and know that nothing's going to happen to you. That's subconscious because you're now taking the necessary needed steps so that you're always fully aware and conscious. Your stress level is going to go down. It's going to increase all types of good stuff. All right. Uh, next week, I'm going to be talking about a whole bunch of things. I'll give you a couple of previews here. Oh, I'm going to talk about. You see all these ads for full body deodorants now? I don't know if you've seen these ads. They're everywhere. Oh, your whole body stinks. It used to be just your armpits. I invented this whole body deodorant because every place on your body stinks. You, you smell like an animal. You disgust everybody, including yourself. So I invented this great deodorant that you can put anywhere to stop the disgusting smell that's emanating out of your body. And I'm watching this going, why does everybody stink like you're going into a zoo, like I'm in a monkey house here, okay? So people, I mean, reek of body odor, disgusting, horrible, worse than, you know why? Because your body's toxic, you're full of toxins. So I'm going to talk about that next week and give you the cure for that so you don't have to, and see how they're scamming you. I'll talk about the Supreme Court in Brazil is screwing Elon Musk. Oh, I get Oh, I got, I got so much stuff to talk about. I'm going to be drilling you with uh, stuff. Ian, I'm going to give a deep dive into water and salt. Do you know there's a salt that makes you lose weight? Like in like, you can lose 10 pounds in two days. I'll tell you that next week. So make sure you subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Please share this with everybody you know. Leave a comment and visit our websites. We're going to put a couple websites on there if you're not a partner. Go to KevinTrudeauFanClub.com, become a partner. If you're not a member of the Global Information Network, go to GlobalInformationNetwork.com, check that out. 
If you want more information on Your Wish Is Your Command, my ultimate success program, go to yourwishisyourcommand.com. Uh, we have a lot more websites too. But we'll, we'll put those up at the end when we're scrolling the credits. I'm Kevin Trudeau. Thanks for joining me. This is everything I don't want you to know about. I hope you're feeling better now than when you started. The best is yet to come. Just remember, don't let anyone steal your dream. You can do it. Until next week, we'll see you.